Hello there. For the first time in a long time, there was a one-to-one -one talk between the heads of government in London and Edinburgh. Relationships remained strained, though. So British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak held, as they said, a friendly but robust talk with Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon on Thursday evening, discussing common challenges. Both spoke in separate interviews on Friday but did not give a press conference. Apparently, the approximately one-hour working lunch in Inverness went back to Sunak's initiative, which set him apart from his predecessors. Boris Johnson had maintained little contact with Sturgeon, and Liz Truss avoided meeting during her brief tenure. Sturgeon was just seeking attention and should be ignored, Truss said. Relations between Edinburgh and London are particularly strained by the Scottish government's efforts to hold another independence referendum. A ruling by the British Constitutional Court or the British Supreme Court recently prohibited Edinburgh from going it alone. Nevertheless, Sturgeon is trying to increase political pressure on London to obtain approval. Like his predecessors, Sunak takes the position that the 2014 referendum, which was in favor of the Union, has a longer binding effect. At the same time, Sunak is trying to emphasize the advantages of the Union. According to media reports, there was talk of two green free ports in Scotland. However, the two governments are also at odds on current issues. Sturgeon has criticized London's proposed tightening of the right to strike, while the UK government opposes Scotland's plan to make it easier to change sex. The Sunak government is currently having a constitutional review as to whether it should refuse to countersign the new Scottish law. A decision is expected in the coming weeks. Or the coming week, but to be honest, I don't really expect Sunak to sign it. The Scottish government wants to discuss its further strategy in its quest for independence from the United Kingdom next March. At a special conference on March 19th in Edinburgh, the Scottish National Party, the SNP, wants to discuss this and decide how the further path towards independence should look like. The pro-independence advocates have recently had to put up with a setback I already mentioned. In November, the British Supreme Court ruled that Scotland cannot hold a referendum without the approval of London which initially put plans for an independence referendum in uh, this year on hold. Sturgeon had previously announced that if that were the case, she would consider the next UK general election a de facto referendum instead. According to a survey, after the court ruling, support among Scots for secession from the United Kingdom increased. In a survey conducted by the polling institute Redfield and Wilton at the end of November, almost half of the Scots surveyed, with 49% said they supported their country's independence if a referendum were imminent, and 45% would therefore vote no, the rest was undecided. In a comparable survey from September last year, only 44% said they wanted to vote yes. Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon wants to take her country out of the UK and back into the European Union. And her reasoning is quite understandable. Brexit has changed the situation in such a way that a new referendum has to take place. As I said, in 2014, a majority of Scots voted against independence. But after that vote, and in the campaign there was a lot of talk of staying in the EU by staying in the Union, after that talk, the Brexit referendum came. And that was not part of that decision. And so I'm still convinced that the London government should give Edinburgh the chance to have the Scottish people have a say. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.